everybody. It's Joe. Back in the craft room once again. It's been a while since we've been in the craft room. Life has just been crazy, but I've got several cups that I'm going to be working on, and I just wanted to bring you along with me. The very first cup I'm going to be working on is going to be an alcohol ink camouflage cup, and as you can see, I've already prepped my cup. Uh, I sanded it down, wiped it off with 91% alcohol, and spray painted it a light tan color. Um... I'm sorry, I don't know the exact color. So, you'll be needing some alcohol inks. I've got several different colors. Um, I've got a couple greens. I'm not really sure, but we're going to give it a try and figure out what works the best. This is going to be my first camo cup, so you're going to be learning along with me. But the alcohol inks I'm going to be using is, I've got Tim Holtz Oregano. And also botanical. Those are the two greens that I've chosen. I've also got, this is also Tim Holtz Sunset Orange. Tim Holtz Teakwood for my brown. And then I've got Pinata Mantilla Black. So this is also going to be a Saran cup. So, you'll need some cling wrap. doesn't have to be name brand. You can use off brand. You're going to definitely need some gloves for this as well. I am actually working on my cup turner station. And so, I put down a piece of parchment paper just to keep some of the alcohol ink off of my um, Teflon sheets that I keep on my turner station. That way, if you get epoxy on them, well, my hand is out of view, but if you get epoxy on your Teflon sheet, it just peels right off. So it's, it just makes for easy cleanup. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this. What we're going to do first, of course, is put our gloves on. And we're going to get out a piece of the saran that will go around this cup. This is a 20 ounce Ozark Trail from Walmart. Those are typically the cups that I use. So we're just gonna get a piece of the, whoops. I've never been good with this. I don't know if it doesn't like me or I'm just not coordinated, but let me get a piece off here. <clears throat> And this is not my technique. I actually watched this technique on YouTube. And it was a video by Miss Kiss Creations. And you need to go check her channel out. She does a lot of really good Tumblr tutorials. And I think she'd be really helpful. Especially if you're just getting into making tumblers. I haven't been doing it for for very long, but she gives really good instruction as well. So check her out, Miss Kiss Creations, and I will link her YouTube channel down in the description of this video. And like I said, I want to give a shout out to her. This, this was one of the best camouflage tutorials that I've seen out there. So I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. I'm going to try that. So that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to start out just by dropping the alcohol ink onto our saran wrap. Just random, here, there, and everywhere. You don't have to put it on there in any particular order. Again, we all know what camouflage looks like, and it is totally random. So that's what we're trying to do here. And I hope that you can see this good. I have a new lighting set up. And this is the very first time I've used it. My husband gifted me with a very awesome 
ring light for Christmas and this is the very first time I've used it and it's April 1st so I'm excited to have that now I'm adding my brown so I had the orange the two greens now I'm just gonna add some brown in and then just a little black I'm not gonna use a whole lot of black but I feel like it needs to have some black black oh gosh that was a lot in one place the black wasn't wanting to come out and then when it did come out so we'll see but this is a different technique I've never done anything like this and as I showed you earlier saran wrap doesn't like me so I'm a little concerned about this next part of this but honestly she made it look like it wasn't gonna be hard so we're gonna try it hopefully I won't make a big gigantic mess but you know what the first thing I'm gonna do is put my painting apron on so that if I make a mess with this it's not going to get all over my shirt bear with me just a second I'll be right back all right so I just had to get over there and get in my closet and get my apron out if I get alcohol ink on something I'd rather have it on the apron instead of the clothes I'm wearing so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold this piece of saran wrap in half just like that Scoot it over a little bit so you can still see it. And you can start to see, just by it touching itself, it's starting to create a pattern. But you're just going to tap it down. And you don't want to smush it. You don't want to rub it around. You're just going to tap, tap, tap. And you can even put, use your whole hand and just tap, tap, tap it down. Okay? And I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit. You, you can see there that it's making little creases and wrinkles. That's what you want. Okay? So once you have it all tapped down, and look, you definitely want to wear gloves. Because you're going you're gonna to get it all over you if you don't. So, whoops. So once you get that tapped down like that, then you're going to open it back up. And here's the part that scares me about opening this back up without making a gigantic mess. So I'm going to do my best to just open this thing back up. Ooh. Well, okay, that wasn't near as bad as I thought it was going to be. It didn't go as smooth as she did hers, but wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so now that you've got this open back up, you're going to take your cup. Let's see, did she roll it? I think she did. So you're going to put it on there, and you're just going to fold it around it okay and you're just gonna tap the bottom up onto the bottom and then you're just gonna go around the cup you're not trying to smooth it out you want it to have those wrinkles but you're just touching all the way around the cup to try To make a pattern and you can see looks like I've got a lot of brown and black right there but that's okay because we're gonna work on that here in a minute so you're just tapping it down you're not trying to run it smooth you can see the veins of the saran wrap that's what you want that's what's gonna make the camouflage pattern okay so I've tapped it all the way around I've tapped the bottom now we're going to unwrap it. It's like Christmas. We're going to unwrap it and see what we've got. Okay. So I'm going to do this bottom. And do that. Yes, I got way too much black, but that's okay because. Okay. 
You might also need some paper towels. I don't want to stick my hand inside the cup with all that alcohol ink on it. So I wipe my hand off. Okay, so here's what you've got right now. It looks a little camouflagey, right? But here's where the magic comes in. I need this on my other hand. Some things I do right-handed, some things I do left-handed. So, you've got that. Now you're going to pick up your piece of saran wrap, and you're just going to start dabbing it on the cup. Check that out. Tell me that doesn't look like camouflage. Okay? So you're just going to keep dabbing it. Now, if you've worked with alcohol ink very much, you know that it dries fast, okay? I've got a big blob of black right there. I'm not liking that, but I can fix that here in a minute, okay? So we're just going to blob this on the cup. And you can hear that it's, it's drying. The stuff on the saran wrap is drying out. The stuff on the cup is drying out. And so there, that's round one. I'm going to try to spin it around. Okay? That's round one. It's a pretty good start. Right? But we're going to do it again. Okay? I'm not going to put any black on it this time. So I'm going to throw this piece of saran away. I'm going to get another piece out. And we're going to do the same thing again, except this time, I've got so much black on the cup, I'm not going to put any black on it this time. I'm just going to do the orange, the green, and the brown. Okay? So we're just going to lay it out. I'm going to start with the orange again. Just here, there, and everywhere. And I'm, I am going to use both kinds of green again because I was afraid that this botanical was going to be too bright green, but I don't think so. I think it worked out good, so I'm using both of those. And then here's the oregano, which it's a darker woodsy green. Okay. And then my brown. All right. I'm going to fold it in half. And we're just going to smoosh it together. Ooh, yeah, this looks a lot more like the camouflage that I had in my head. And so it's going to change the way this cup looks. So again, you're not smoothing it flat. You're just touching it all. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of pinching a little bit with my thumbs into my hand to try to make a few more creases. Okay? So now that we've got that all smushed together, smushed that is a technical crafting term. Now that it's all smushed together, we're going to open it back out. And honestly, this is the hardest part, opening the saran wrap back up. Okay. So we got this open back up. All right. Now, I'm going to lay this dark black spot on here first, somewhere on that green. And I'm going to pull this back side up into it and just roll my cup. I think my saran was a little bit big for my cup, but that's okay. Whoops, I've got this. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold that all over. I'm going to push the end up onto the bottom 
And again, I'm just going to go around, just smashing it, just pressing it down to the cup, okay? Just pressing it down. I'm not moving the saran wrap from where it's at on the cup. I'm just pressing it down, okay? One more press on the bottom. Then we're going to unwrap it. Whoops. Something fell behind me. I'm not really sure what, but we'll deal with that later. All right. Now, oh. again, I'm going to wipe my hand off before I put it inside the cup. Now we have this. I'm not loving that area right there, but we're going to pick up our saran wrap. And my parchment has come untaped, but that's all right. We're going to pick up our saran wrap while it's still wet, okay? And we're just going to stick it to the places that we're not filling, okay? Oh, I'm up out of the, out of the view. All right, so just keep sticking it to the cup. And you can tell it's, it's dry, okay? Get rid of this one. I'm gonna wipe my hands off here for just a second. And I'm going to assess my cup. I hope you can see this. I hope that it's not too much of a glare. So, I'm not a camouflage expert. I don't own one piece of camouflage. But I'm just looking at this. And I mean, it looks pretty decent to me. You got some orange up here. You got the cracklies. But honestly, I'm going to do it one more time. With just green and brown, I think. More green, less brown. So, third time's a charm. And you can do this as much as you want to. And she even showed that you could just take a little piece of saran wrap and just do touch-ups if you want to. But to me, I've got a little bit too much brown on there. So I'm going to do it one more time with both greens. Tiny bit of brown just so I can get the mixture in there. And I may put a dab or two of orange. I'm trying to get my parchment paper tape back down. This uh, painter's tape doesn't like to stick to parchment paper. So I'm going to do both greens. And honestly, you do have to work kind of fast with this because alcohol ink dries pretty quickly. Okay. Ooh, that was a lot of green right there. I'm just doing that much brown. And then the orange, just because I feel like I need more orange. And in places, the orange and the green will make brown. Okay. Hold it in half. Pat, pat, pat. I 
open it back out. Painters type sticks and go round and round. Go this way a little bit. The saran wrap will stick to the painters tape, but the painters tape won't stick to the parchment paper. Who knew? All right. All right. I gotta quit messing around. Let's see. I want green there, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna roll it that way. Fold it down on the bottom and tap, 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 tap all the way around. Okay, tap, tap, tap. Now I'm going to unfold it. Well, I can't find the end. There it is. You want to try to not touch the cup a whole bunch because it'll make a circle where your finger touches touches it. Okay? Wipe my hand off. Put my hand inside. And pat, pat, pat. Pat, pat, pat. Pat, pat, pat. Okay. If you have a place that you don't like, you want to pat it. All right. I am good with that. I've got a little line right there. able to get rid of. Ah. Okay. Gosh, I hope you can see that. I hope it's not dark. I think it came out pretty good for my very first camouflage cup. I've got a little line right there, but that's okay because I'm going to be putting a decal on here. So there you have it. Our very first alcohol ink camouflage cup. I hope that this tutorial will help you and if you've been wanting to make a camo cup, I hope that this is what you've been looking for. And again, thank you to Miss Kiss Creations for the for the video that showed me how to do it. And I will be back and show you, and it may be in another video, show you the decal and the finished cup. And... Give me just a little bit to rearrange things. I'm going to do another cup and probably include it in this video as well. So give me just a little bit to get things situated and I'll be right back. One thing I did forget to mention about this alcohol ink camo cup, you will need to seal this with some clear sealer before you put your epoxy on. And so you'll just use whatever clear sealer you normally use on your, on your cups, on your tumblers. So yeah, I'm impressed with this for my first camo cup. All right, give me just a minute. We'll be back. Hey everybody, we are back for part two of this tutorial. And I've got all my stuff set up for this part but I just wanted to share a little trick so 
on this cup, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put a, I've, I've already prepped my cup, sanded, wiped down with alcohol, and spray painted with a flat white spray paint and let it dry. I'm going to be doing a epoxy with acrylic paint kind of swirl on this. It creates kind of a marble look and this is a 30 ounce Ozark Trail from Walmart. I'm going to be mixing up 40 mils or mls, however you, however you say it, of epoxy. I've got four different colors of paint that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the Anita's just white. I'm going to be using Apple Barrel Granite Gray, Apple Barrel Elephant Gray, and Apple Barrel Cobalt Hue. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up total 40 mLs of epoxy. But I'm going to divide it out and I'm going to do 5 mLs for each paint color. So that's going to be 20 mLs and that will give me 20 to do just a clear coat on the cup before I pour the paint on. But my trick is, I've got old eyes, and so when I'm measuring out my epoxy, it's hard for me to see the lines on these little cups. So what I do is, I take my Sharpie, and I make a line, if you can see it, on wherever the line is that I need to be pouring to. Because once I start pouring clear into clear, and it's basically a clear line, I can't see, honestly. I can't see where I'm going. So I just make a line on my little cup so that I can see where I'm going to so that my epoxy comes out the right consistency, the right measurement, so that it hardens and I don't have an issue with it being sticky the next day. I hope I didn't just jinx myself by saying that, but that's my that's my little trick so that I can see the lines on the cup when I'm pouring the epoxy. I'm going to go ahead and mix the epoxy off camera, and I'll come back and show you about mixing the paint into the epoxy, but I'm going to do the initial 40 mLs mix off camera, so bear with me, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I've got my epoxy mixed up. And I've got it separated out into four little cups right there. Okay. They're approximately five mLs a piece. May not be exact. I hope you can hear me because I do have my mask on since I've mixed the epoxy up. I apologize if it's muffled. I'm trying to talk loud so you can hear me. Please bear with me. You're also going to need some more popsicle sticks to mix the paint into your epoxy here. And you'll also need some sort of heat. You can use a heat gun. I've got this embossing heat tool. And that's just going to, we'll use that in a little bit to kind of help the paint and the epoxy blend together once we get it all on the cup. So what we're going to do now is just put the clear epoxy layer on the cup and then we'll mix the paint into these other cups and then we'll drizzle that across the cup. I'm going to put some paper underneath the cup just to catch any kind of drippage. All right, so here we go. We're just going to put a, a light coat of just 
clear epoxy on the cup. That's just going to help the epoxy with the paint to flow and move around the cup. You, you need to have this clear, this clear base. I hope that I mixed up enough. It's been a while since I did a tumbler, so hope I've mixed up enough for this size cup. Pretty sure I have. We'll just have to work with it. I'm not touching real hard, just trying to spread the epoxy out into a having a issue with my turner there. Just trying to get a good even coat on the cup. Like I said, we're going to heat this up here in just a little bit, and that's going to help it kind of level out. And then when we put the other epoxy with the paint on it, we'll have awesome coverage on the whole cup. This clear coat is just to help the epoxy with the paint in it be able to flow across the cup. Don't forget to get your bottom. Get a pretty good even coat around your bottom. Make sure you get, if you have an emblem on your cup, make sure you get around it real good. Make sure you don't miss the inside the crease and stuff. You want to make sure, like at the bottom of the cup, you want to make sure that little ridge gets filled in good. You're just trying to get a good, even coat all the way around your cup. Make sure you pay attention to the top rim. Just go out and over. Make sure you pay attention to if you're using a cup like this where it graduates down in size. Make sure that you're touching that and making sure that it all gets coated good. Okay. Just a little bit more left. You want to have a good coat. You want this to be able to move. You're putting more on here than if you were doing a hang method cup where you're just trying to barely get any on the cup. You want to have a decent, and like I said, this is a 30 ounce tumbler and I've put about 20 mLs on here. Okay? Let me change my glove. I'm going to hit this real fast with my heat just to pop any bubbles that might be in it and also help it flow a little bit.
You want to make sure when you're using heat on your tumbler that you don't stay in one place too long. I see that I've got a fuzz or something, so I'm going to have to get that off when it comes back around. You just need to make sure you don't stay in one place too long. You will scorch your epoxy. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to get a different stick. Now, when you're adding your paint into your epoxy, it doesn't take very much paint. Just a couple drops. If you put too much paint in your epoxy, it will make it get thick and gummy. Okay? So, this is the blue. Oh my goodness, that cup is cracked. Hold on just a second. I'm going to have to transfer this to a different cup. I didn't realize that cup was cracked when I put that epoxy in there. Alright, so we're just going to put just a couple little drops of this paint in there. That should be all I need right there. I'm going to stir that up. You see that? That has got plenty of color. You want to make sure that you... I apologize about the dogs. I've got two little Pomeranians in the house and they, they think they own the neighborhood. So if anything moves, they're on it. Alright, so... As you can see, it is a little bit thicker, okay? You want to make sure that you get all of your paint mixed in well. You do not want to have clumps of paint in there because it will affect your tumbler. So I'm going to go on to the next color. This is going to be the light gray. Again, just a couple drops. Should be more than enough. Just make sure you get it mixed in really well. You don't want to have any paint that is not mixed in with your epoxy. Okay? And don't worry about bubbles at this point in time because we're going to hit it with some heat before we put it on the cup. That will just ensure that there's no bubbles and that it will be the right consistency when we put it on the cup. Again, a couple drops. That was like one and a half. Alright, there we go. Okay. So there's my darker gray. And last but not least, I'm going to do a little bit of white. I might need to put a little bit more white than the others, just to keep it from being too see-through. Although, I've, I have a white base coat on my cup. It shouldn't be a problem. But I do want to make sure that I can see some white on this finished cup. I'm trying to replicate a design that was on a shirt and so I have to see all four colors if I don't get the white in there I run the chance of the blue and the gray going through the epoxy and totally covering the white base and I've got to have some white so that's why that's the reason for the white okay so before I put this on there, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat, not a lot, just a little. You can see the air bubbles popping. You can tell that it got the air and changed the consistency just a little bit. So now all we're going to do is just string this across the cup. 
You can go all the way across. You can do little zigzags just on the cup. For what I need, I don't need straight lines, so I don't have to go all the way and let it drop off. If you didn't want to see any, like, globs, like this coming around right here, if you didn't want to see anything like that, you would need to start over here, go past the cup, and you would get a straighter line. But I need to have some of those globs in this cup to match the design that I'm trying to do. So I'm not going to go past and back and forth, you know. And don't forget your bottom. And you can just hold it right on the edge and let it dribble and it will go down to the bottom of the cup. Gravity is a good thing, okay? So there it goes. I'm not going to use all of this blue right now because I w might want to come back with some. I've used probably two-thirds of the blue that I had mixed up, which is fine. I'm going to go a little bit around the top up here. And the way you put this on here, it's going to look different. When this cup gets done spinning, it's going to look different than where you lay the color down right now. So don't fret too much. Just make sure you get a good mixture of your colors. It's going to change and change and change. Just get a good mixture of your colors, okay? Now I'm going to do, I think, the light gray. So I'm going to... A little bit of heat. You can see the bubbles popping. You don't want to do it too much. You don't want to get it too hot. And then I'm just going to start drizzling. And honestly, this is one of the easiest cups that you can do. If you're a beginner just getting into cup making, this is one of the easiest things. Because after this spins, it's going to be smooth. It'll be ready for a decal. And if you're not going to put a decal on it, it'll be ready to sell or give away whatever you're doing. Because it'll, it'll be smooth. So if I was just getting into cup making, I would probably start out with something like this. And then gradually move into it. I can tell you that chunky glitter is not your friend when you first start out. Uh, I started out with probably one of the hardest cups that you could start out with, which was a a bee peekaboo and oh my word I thought what have I got myself into I'm not going to be able to do this there is no way in this life that I'm going to be able to deal with this this glitter like this but all I can say is keep watching videos watch all the videos watch all the stuff You'll get it, and just keep practice, practice, practice. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the darker. And again, I didn't use all of that light gray. I want to save some. <clears throat> you don't want to use the heat on this too long. You can actually see the bubbles popping. And then I go back and stir it easy before I start putting it on the cup.
to me, this kind of cup right here is just relaxing. Just drizzling. And just, you know. This is one of the easiest and most relaxing cups to me. And you can use whatever colors you want. And if you wanted some glitter, absolutely. If I was going to do this as a beginner cup, I would add some extra fine glitter into my into my paint epoxy mixture. I would definitely start out with extra fine. Um, it lays down better. You seem to have more control with it. So yeah, extra fine glitter is your friend in the beginning. Again, don't forget about your bottoms. You need to make sure that you get all of your colors on the bottoms. Whoops. Alright, I'm going to stop there with that. And then I'm going to move on to my white. Just an easy mix. And drizzle. Even though you're seeing a lot of white from the base color of the cup, it'll make a difference having the white on top of the other colors because that will let you actually see the white more, if that even makes any sense, on the finished cup. Because these colors are going to continue to spread and morph and marble and go into each other and so if I didn't put the white on there's a chance that you might not see any white like right there where I went through the blue where I'm going through the other colors it'll make a difference in the finished cup I added a little bit more white paint to this epoxy and I can tell because it's, it's thicker. So like I said, you want to just do a couple drops. You don't want to get your, your epoxy too thick. Okay? Don't forget about the rim. Get up as close to it as you can with all of your colors. Alright, I'm going to start back over and use the rest of all of the paint epoxy mixture that I have mixed up. I don't have much left. I'm going to put it just for a second. And then I'm just going to go back over. Okay, paying close attention to the top. I feel like I need some of every color up near the top rim. You can even lightly touch it to it. Don't touch the cup, but just touch the epoxy and it will help pull some of that color off of your popsicle stick. Like right there. I felt like that needed a little bit more blue right there. And I can tell you from the vision I had in my head, I think this is going to come out just exactly what I felt that it needed to be. Again, don't forget the bottom. And I'll show you a picture after I get the cup finished. I'll show you a picture of what the inspiration for this cup was. And you can leave me comments down below 
and let me know if you feel like I hit it or not. I'm just getting a little bit of that blue off the bottom or off of the paper. I needed a little bit more blue on the bottom. So I've used all that. That was around 5 mLs. Please don't put your epoxy cups in the garbage right away. Epoxy gets hot, and so don't put them in the garbage right away. I just leave mine sitting on this silicone, not silicone. Well, I'll think about it in a minute. Anyway, Teflon. I just leave mine sitting on this Teflon mat. It's pretty heat resistant. I use it on my, with my screen printing and my heat transfer vinyl. So it can withstand some heat. So I just leave them sitting on there and then the next day I'll put them in the garbage. But please don't put your cups in the garbage right away because it's still continuing to produce heat. Okay. So finish with my light gray. Now we're gonna move on to the dark gray. Heat it up just for a second. It doesn't take much because there's not much in there. Y'all, I am so excited about how this is turning out. And once you see the inspiration for it, I think you'll understand my excitement. And you don't have to go straight back and forth. You can make little different movements in there. If you want to do a circle or you want to go side to side, you can. It's your cup. It's your design. You do what you want to. Make it your own. Alright, so there we're finished with the dark. Last but not least is the little bit of light we have left. And on this, I just want to go in between. If I see any places that has like a big glob of color, I'm going to use the white to go in between that to kind of break it up a little bit. Ooh, I got a bubble right there. Oh, it just popped. But that's okay because we're going to come back in with a little heat here in just a minute. Okay? And I mean just a little heat. It's not going to take much. Alright, so there we are done with the white. Now, I'm just going to go over this. And again, when you're heating this, don't heat it too much. Because if you do, everything will run together and you'll create mud. I'm just going to pass back and forth about three to four inches away just to break up the bubbles if there are any and then I'm going to leave it, okay? Okay, that was one time around the cup. Sorry about that, I saw some more bubbles after I got finished. 
All right, maybe twice around the cup. But there it is. So that's what it looks like right now. We're going to let this spin. Honestly, I normally let mine spin six to eight hours. So I'm going to let this spin for at least six hours. And then I'll come back and I'll let you see what it has morphed into. Because it's not going to look just like this when we come back. All right. We'll be back in about six hours. Hey everybody, I'm back. Just wanted to show you the two cups that I was working on. Here is the blue and gray one. It's It's been actually several days, but look how awesome that looks. I'm going to turn it, let it turn around a little bit so you can see it. So you can see that it did change just a little bit from the way it looked when I first put the paint on. But that's exactly the look I was going for. And then here is the camouflage cup. I did spray a coat of clear sealer on here. And went ahead and put my decals on. I have not yet epoxied this one. Just wanted to show you how they came out. I think the camouflage came out pretty good for my first attempt at camouflage. And I love this one. This one's really smooth. I'll clean it off with some 91% alcohol and it will be ready for a decal and another coat of epoxy. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and if you'll hit the bell notification down at the bottom that will notify you each and every time I post a new video and if this is your first time watching my channel please look back through my other videos I've got several different types of videos on my channel that I think you might enjoy as well so I have got several cups here that I need to get epoxied and some more than I need to do. I may come back for another video for one or two of those. I'm not sure. I just need to get some cups turning. So thank you so much for stopping by today and please check back and I will be uploading some more videos real soon. Talk to you later. Bye.